Dean, welcome back. Thank you for joining me. Um, Pre-season started on Monday. We'll get onto that soon. Let's start off with last season. Finished second in the league, lost to Solihull Moors in the playoff semi-final. Got to the quarterfinals of the FA Trophy, lost to Bromley, and got to the second round of the FA Cup and forced to replay against Newport County, who ultimately won that game. When you look back, how do you sum up the season as a whole? A yeah, very positive season. Um, frustrating when it comes to the big games. The real big games, I thought we'd come up short in that department. Um, especially when we got Newport back here. Um, when we went to, obviously, an FA Cup replay. Um, constant errors running our game, running the big games. It cost us last year. So it's something we're looking to rectify this year. We're a better quality of player, we feel, that we brought in. Um, and then, obviously, the FA Trophy away at Bromley quarterfinal. We went there depleted. We literally only had 10 players. Um, so... I sort of wrote that competition off at, at that stage. We're very unlucky with the draw. And draws haven't been really kind to us. And what I did like about last year, the positive about last year, when we lost that Woken away 1-0 in a tight game where we scored a goal in that game that was disallowed, the next 10 games we went unbeaten. We, and under pressure, we showed we could handle it. When it come to the playoff game, I thought we defended the worst we defended since the Newport game. I thought a level of performance. Apart from Idris Kanu and Jerome McKean, I was stuck to their level. I thought every other player was well below their, their level. And uh, we did a little bit of bad luck going into that. Steady went in with an injury. Brunty rolled his ankle on the Thursday. So we had a few little bits that didn't go our way. And we never managed to get um we never managed to get everybody fit for that week. So little things went against us, but all in all I felt I still felt confident going into the game, but it was very frustrating. Um, but what I did do personally, I took about forty eight hours to dissect it and then I just thought straight away, right, let's move on to next season, which we did and uh, we started that on the Monday morning. Uh, after the weekend of the playoff game and we got to walk straight away got a lot of business done early so very happy it's clearly been a very busy yeah. summer for you 12 new player signings a mixture of experience and younger players tell us a bit about your approach to the business you did and ultimately how happy are you with the recruitment overall yeah, we're delighted absolutely delighted we've got a lot of our main targets which was very important we have missed out on a couple as well that's how it happens um, how it works delighted with the young players we brought in uh, Joe Roy, Joe Grimwood, players of that ilk, really, really impressed with what they've done. Jermaine Francis, obviously they're stepping now into full-time football for the first time, so they're going to need a little bit of time, a bit like Steady last year, need a little bit of time, he's coming into full-time football, just to get used to full, it takes about really about six months to get used to it fully. The routines change, them lads have probably had jobs, they were probably walking and training in the evening, so delighted with the business of that, and I'm absolutely buzzing with the senior players we've signed, obviously everyone knows Hartigan. Um, which is which is a real uh, a real tick in our box. Um, Miles Kenlock's a top player. Uh, Billy Clifford, I walked with before, so a lot of the players. Nick Tavares, a lot of the players we brought in. I'm really happy with. They were their main targets. A lot of them. So to manage to get him was was important. And I think Brown is going to be a special player for our football club. He's a, he's a match winner. And I thought at times last year in the tight games we didn't have enough real match winners that can just change a game. And Brownie can do that. Often supporters feel that you jump in very, very quickly and just sign a load of players, but actually you're doing that for months and months in advance. Tell us a little bit about that process. Yeah, the process is always six months earlier. So we started sort of in in January last year, of this year, December, January, we started sticking together who we like, who we like from obviously the National League. We try to sign a lot of players from the National League that know it, that understand it. So what happens a lot with the EFL players, they come down to this level, they don't realise how difficult it is. If I'm being honest, there's not a lot between the top 10 teams in the National League. And I would say all the way up so probably to the top three teams in, in, in EFL too. And we've seen that happen over several years where teams have jumped and jumped again. I know some have made huge investments, but there's not a lot between them. And very rarely you see a team come down from EFL two and go straight back up. I think Grimsby are the only team to ever do it. So that's how difficult it is. Um, so yeah, so look, at, there's a lot. Of, there's a big process in place, uh, and we just start ticking them off. Some might go to league clubs. We've lost out in a few that have gone to different clubs, and then it's just uh, it's just constantly monitoring of players all the time. So we'll always have sort of six players to each position, always earmarked, and that'll happen six months in advance. That'll happen the same now. We're at phase three, so we we just finished phase two of our recruitment, which was making sure we sign the players. We're at phase three now. If anything happens, loans, stuff like that, that's sort of our market. So. If anyone gets injured, who who can we go call on? Uh, we'll be monitoring players over pre-season from oppositions, from different clubs to make sure that um, we've got a we've got a player list in, in place in case anything happens to any of our players. 
On to pre-season, day four today. How are the lads getting on? Yeah, tough. <laughs> We're old school in pre-season. We come back and we get straight into it. Um, well, what we do usually in the off-season, the lads have basically five weeks off um, initially where they don't do anything. And then we build up a four-week programme that builds into pre-season. So they do that personally themselves. They have to clock in. They do it on their watches. They do it on you know, the monitors and stuff like that. And they clock in every day with, the, with their medical department. So the majority of the players we got in place nice and early. So they were able to do that programme. Um, so they've come back and most of them have been in excellent shape, um, if not all of them. So they've worked extremely hard. And uh, they've been straight into the deep end, and I'm really pleased with with the work ethic. And like I always say, if you get a lot of players in the first day of pre season going to the line, it gives you an opportunity and have a success. And they've done that so far. Let's look at the season ahead of us. How excited are you to get started? Can't wait. Um, I couldn't wait actually. Like I said to you that Monday after the playoff game, I was I was thinking of, I don't need a break. If we want to jump straight back in. Um, we've set ourselves a points total. I've pitched that to every player that we've signed, and obviously the players that are here, they understand the standards we set. It's very difficult their division though. It's it's not easy. You know you have some big clubs are in there within their division. Oldham, or Forest Green are obviously coming down. They've invested heavily with an experienced manager. Obviously South End are a good side. Um, there's several. Ultra have done really well in the transfer market as well. I think they've done really well over the summer. And with their signing, so there's a lot of good players and a lot of good teams within our division and good managers. So it won't be easy. Um, there's no doubt, probably be, we will be one of the favourites. Um, and we've got to be able to handle that pressure. And when it comes to the big games, we've got to be able to really handle the pressure. And I don't think we did that well enough last year, but I think with the players we signed, we'll be able to do that this year. Well, I'm very positive that we can do that this year. Just touching on what you said, obviously there have been a lot of comments putting us as favourites to win the league this season. Does this add extra pressure or just give you confidence to drive you forwards and achieve that goal? No, but look, oh, the pressure I put on the players as it is, I think the first year I was here when I had the team from the summer, I set a points target of 80. Last year we set a points target of 90 and next year it'll be a little bit larger than 90 because we're going to have to be able to achieve that. So I think we got 74 in the first year when we set 80 and we got 86 when we set 90. So the pressure's on the players from day one and they know that. You know, if we're going to be successful, we've got to keep raising the bar. And the players that don't come with that, they, I'm afraid they fall by the wayside. The ones that do stay with us. So I keep pushing the football club forward. My dream is to get this uh, club back into the national, uh, back into the EFL and out of the National League. And um, there's no doubt we will be favourites. But we just got to make sure we take it one week at a time. Football can change so quickly. Um, and I understand we're level-headed. We keep our feet firmly on the, on the floor. We're not getting carried away with ourselves. And uh, every goal we score is precious. Every goal we concede will affect us. So every point we pick up will be precious. And there's a lot of points to play for. And we're just looking forward to a healthy pre-season for the players. It's the most important time for the players now, Dan. It's the players now are saying in the first three weeks, it's all about them. They do 18 sessions, 18 two-hour sessions in 21 days. And that's all about them, about their fitness, their baseline fitness and how they can get through things. Um, the ones that are injured at the minute was a little bit whammy. It's Danny Collins. Brunty rolled his ankle on the training pitch um, on Tuesday, so he's out for a few days, which isn't ideal, and Harry Pritchard is still out with his back. So for everybody else, if they get a clean pre-season, they usually have a, a good season. We're expecting Danny back in the next 10 days, so that'll be a positive. I hope Brunty will be back in the next few days. With Pritchard, we still got a few other things to sort out, so it's a little bit unlucky for them lads, but um, for the other lads, if they get a healthy pre-season, especially the first three weeks, they'll have a good season. There's no doubt they'll be strong and fit and ready to go. If we look at the last three seasons since you've been here and specifically where we finished, 21-22, uh, you took over from Harry Kuehl after seven games and finished 18th. 22-23, finished fifth. And last season, 23-24, finished second. Do you think those positions and the season-on-season -season improvements fairly reflect what you were trying to do? And can we go on better this season? I think the first thing I had to come in, obviously the football club at the bottom of the table, so I had to make sure we kept instead of relegation. We did that with about 10, 11 games to go. Then we started processing how we could um, how we could achieve getting towards the playoffs and, and the right end of the table. And I think we missed out probably a year, probably a year ahead of where we should be. To come 18th and then come 5th and then go 2nd is a major, a major achievement. But the, the big gap was from 18th but I remember that summer, not a lot of players wanted to sign for us. There was a lot of negativity. It was a dark cloud around our football club. It was very, very difficult. We signed a lot of players late in the window. And uh, there, was a, there was a dark cloud around the football club. But bit by bit, with good people and the staff we got here and the staff we brought in, we managed to recruit better and better. And now people want to join us. And we get contacted constantly all the time where people want to come to a positive football club. And that's, that's, that's testament really to the staff 
people like yourself, to the chairman, to the support he's given myself, and uh, that's testament to all of us here at the football club and the, the coaching staff, the medical staff. People actually want to come to our football club again, so and our supporters, how positive they are around around their match days, and you know people enjoy coming here. So all in all, it's a collective achievement that we're we're now a club where people talk in a positive light again, rather than a negative one, what they were four or five years ago. I've known you a long time now and uh, know that you go about your business and don't really concern yourself too much with what other clubs do. That being said, who do you think are the real threats this season? Forest Green, Oldham, um, Altrincham, um, South End. Several clubs, obviously uh, Sutton are coming down. They've had a big turnover, a change of players, so interested to see how they do. Solihull again will probably be in around there. Um, there's so many good sides. You can go on to York. Obviously, major investment at York, change of manager again. So he's, I think they've cleared a few out and got a few of his players in. So um, it'll be interesting to see how, how they all do. I think the, the main thing for us is to focus on ourselves. You know, we've got to play everybody twice. Um, and if we can take four points off everybody, we'll do all right, you know. So that's how I sort of look at it. It's nice and positive. One game at a time. We will have, not last year, we had a bad spell and we lost away at Chesterfield. We didn't win for a few games, but I didn't think we had the strength and depth in the squad. We have the handle it with a lot of injuries defensively. We tried to address that. We brought in, brought back the GPS system. We're bringing in now a conditioning coach who joins us in the next few weeks. So we're trying to make things better. Um, but they'll all hopefully we get uh, the one percenters right. They're the most important thing. So if we can get six or seven one percenters right, hopefully that'll make us better as we go forward. So, but I always look at myself first and for how can I improve? Did I get things right? And, I think for nine out of ten, nine out of ten times I've got things right last year. There was a few things I did get wrong with selection and maybe tactics and whatever else. So I do reflect on myself first and foremost. There ain't a blame game here. Uh, it's a, it, we are collective, but I always look at myself first. It's fair to say that the chairman has really backed you to go one better this campaign. With season tickets going on sale this week, how, is it, how important is it that supporters now back you and the lads? I think we've been sensible. Um, we've grown the last couple of years we worked with the same budget uh, this year we have got an increase in budget which is which is positive it's not outrageous it isn't what people might think you know i just think we've signed good players and they've joined us for the right reasons for football and reasons um and we signed good age the age of the players have been have been good you know like sort of in that prime like i say miles kenlock nick Tavares, people like that so uh, with the support we've had from upstairs i just think we've been sensible we made business decisions wise ones um, we haven't gone and you know thrown loads of money at it, um, but we just we, it's been affordable for what we can spend at our football club. But I think what does help is if we can get more supporters through the gate and make sure that we can really get the hive going next year. I remember a couple of times last year on a negative, you know we dagging them here on a Tuesday night. There was about nine hundred people there. It wasn't a great, but we managed to soldier through that. I remember we, we won two one in the end. Um, so we just need to make sure every week we can get the hive going and get it rocking really and get it to where we know it can be like it was in the playoff game which, which was a fantastic turnout and um, the last game of the season against kitty was a great turnout so hopefully bit by bit we can continue to grow and keep going on that on that trajectory finally i'll leave it with this what's your message to supporters ahead of the start of the season yeah i see a few i've seen a lot this week coming in and boys in the season it's great to see them everyone's positive a lot of them thanking me for staying and stuff like that but look you know it, the biggest thing for us is we've got a positive football club um, and we just got to keep it that way and the only way we can do that is if the players keep showing giving 100% us as a staff we keep giving 100% we've shown them how much we care about the football club and their supporters just keep getting behind us we have to give our supporters something to sing about and we, they, our supporters know we play attack minded football I think we picked up 52 points at home last year in our division that's it an outrageous record so that's the standard we've got to get to again we've got to do a little bit better defensively we can see the too many goals last year and you can see we've signed a lot of defenders this year so hopefully we'll be a much uh, stronger outfit defensively and we can still play on the front foot and give our supporters something really to cheer about next year it's going to be a long season but can't wait for the fixtures to come out and I want to thank the guys for all their support Dean best of luck for the season thank you for your time cheers Dan thanks